Luke Combs, Ain't No Love in Oklahoma on the B105 Buzz, brought to you by East Central, en- East Central Energy, member-owned, homegrown, community-focused since 1936. So, if you don't mind, I'm going to start. Okay. Have you noticed how quickly it's getting dark? Nope. Because I like to pretend it's not That's happening. Not well, you know, October's coming, so you're excited about that. I am very excited about that. But I was like, I'm like... Every year, it feels like all of a sudden, like, boom, it's dark. Like, why does this happen so fast? Did you know that in average, or not on average, well, it is average because it's every year. In August, we lose about an hour and a half of daylight from the beginning of August to the end of August. No, I did not know that. And then it gets darker faster as we go because of the way the Earth's tilt is in our northern hemisphere. So, I mean, it's just, it's not your imagination when it gets dark really, really quick. Well, thank you for bringing that up. And then daylight saving time's coming up on November 3rd. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a buzzkill here, but... November 3rd, sunset, 4.48 p.m. We don't need to, Ken. <laughs> we don't need to go there. Well, I'm just saying, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're like me and you're always taken, caught off guard by how dark it gets so <laughs> what quick. for you? Well, I know, but I do. I and you, it it I happens, do. Mm-hmm. you know? Anyway. Yes, I do. Well, if you want something to do before we only have like two hours of daylight... The Walk to End Alzheimer's is going to happen next month, um, September 7th at the deck. And you can register right now, obviously. It's for a good cause. It is at Pioneer Hall. And the goal this year for the Minnesota chapter of the Alzheimer's Association is $230,000. So that's what they're trying to raise. So um, I have a link. You can register, b105country.com. Do something good. Yeah. Well, that year, Walk to End Alzheimer's, September 7th. Mm -hmm. Okay, look for that. Thank you for spreading the uh, community news. More. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coming up, Cole Swindell next on B105. Jordan Davis, Tucson, too late on B105, Northland's number one for new country. Coming up, Lawrence Country Lowdown, 645. Mm-hmm. we got Monday, we got a new mu- uh, new week, music news, stuff like that. What's going yes, on? Yes, there are so many new music announcements. So. so not out yet, but announcing it's coming. Yes. Okay. Well, you don't want to like, you don't want to go right at the same time as Post Malone and that album. No, you do not. You gotta, you gotta, no, you, you don't. Know, Plan that out. Okay. We'll discuss uh, coming up on B105, your weather forecast, too. Kenny Chesney and American Kids on B105, Northland's number one for new country. It's Ken and Lauren. we got Lauren's Country Lowdown right now. What's happening? So, Justin Moore, Friday after the show, of course, he announced that he is releasing his next album in October. He's very underrated, don't you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. He's yeah. great. So he has his current single, This Is My Dirt, and he's going to release the album of the same name, October 11th. Twelve songs on there. Um, he released a song off there with Randy Hauser already. It's called The Worst, and it has collaborations with Blake Shelton and Dirk Bentley. And then um, he also shared that he feels like these songs are sentimental, family-type value songs. He says, but there's also humor, beer drinking, stone-cold country music, and his touring band recorded it with him, which is kind of cool, cool as well. So You know, I was looking, you know, Justin Moore doesn't get the respect that I think he deserves because if you look at it, he's had like 20 big hits over the years. And he's a lot of so artists many. don't have that many. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A lot of good ones, too. Yeah, he's had a ton. So more music announcements. Maddie and Tate, they have a new EP coming out. That's September 13th. It's called What a Woman Can Do. I kind of feel like they don't get the respect they deserve either because, like, they are really good songwriters. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know. Uh, I'm not that familiar with them except for the ones that have been on the radio. Yeah, so. they were here like seven years ago or something. And then Miranda Lambert, she, of course, has a new album coming out next month. And she's going to release a song off of that next week called No Man's Land. Okay. And if you're a part of her fan club, you can text her and she will send you a little snippet. Are you part of the fan club? <laughs> yeah. Did you text her? I actually didn't because the people were leaking the clip anyways. So, but it comes out Wednesday. So, all right, all right. there's something to look forward to. And then um, there is a new, I guess, docu series. I was going to say reality show. It's in production in Nashville. It's interesting. So it's actually produced by Hardy and then a few other like songwriters. It's called Music Row, and it's basically the stories of different songwriters that are really big right now, like. Ashley Cook, Cody Johnson, Ashley Gorley, who I think has written like 30 number one country songs. Yeah, I know the name, yeah. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, it's just going to be kind of following that and how these people make it and what it takes to have a hit song. And so that'll be interesting and just really random that Hardy is like a part of that. Like, mm. 
Okay, Hardy, I see you. It's like a reality docu-series. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm excited about that. Real Housewives of Nashville going to be... That was a rumor for a while, and I was all in, but <laughs> not happening. Sure, that would have been that would been your dream. That would have been, like, too much, because, yeah. like, I'm already... It already sucks up too much of my time. What's so. that one group? Is it Celebrity Wives of Nashville or something that yeah. says all that crash and Reddit? It's a yeah. very scary... Uh, Stay very clear scary of that. Reddit page if you're a country artist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lauren's... Here we go. You won Friday, so you get to decide who goes first? You go first. Okay. I was hoping you would say that. Um, falling right into your plan. Can I ask my friend if they really enjoy making courthouse puns? They said guilty. That was a new one. Well, yeah, that's the boy. That was, that was good. That doesn't always happen. We are supposed to have new ones. Lauren... I just deleted all the German names from my cell phone. It's now Hans Free. Almost laughed. I don't have any German names in my cell phone, I believe. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, maybe I'm last name, about I that. Guess. Ken, what does Bigfoot say when he sees campers and sleeping bags? Hot pockets! Did I use that one already? I don't think so. Okay. We've been doing this for a long time. Lauren, what do you give a dog with a fever? Mustard. It's the best thing for a hot dog. Good one. Ken, what do shrimp wear when they're in the kitchen? An apron. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> wow. Sometimes the dumb ones are, yeah, that's a, you know, yeah, that was the dumb, dumb ones are what you need. Right. There you so, go. So, congrats to me. Thank you. Way to go. I don't know who I'm thanking, but Starting thank off, you for laughing. I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank okay, you. there you go. 710 Laugh Off. Brings your question coming up next here on B105. B105 Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren. Okay, we got your uh, brain your question today. Your chance to win some Papa Murphy's pizza. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, today going to be about 75 sunny. Can't ask for a better day than that. No, that's perfect. So, 48% of college students will do this at least once during the upcoming school year. What is it? I could never do this today. I think I did it once or twice in college, but that's rough. Yeah. Uh, that's a while back. 48% of college students will do this at least once during the upcoming school year. Okay, get ready for that. 727-B105. Call now. Good luck. You can win some Papa Murphy's. Well, 50% almost. Mm-hmm. Do this at least once next year. B105 Breakfast Club. Kid and Lauren, good morning. Here we go. 724, your brain is your question. 48% of college students will do this at least once during the upcoming school year. What is it? Okay, let's, uh, let's go right to the phone and take some guesses here, see what we got. Hello, B105, what's your guess? Hi, is it skip class? I'm not skipping class. That's a very good guess. All right. All right. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Hi, what's your guess? Pulling all nighter? Yeah, pulling all nighter. Sounds like you've done that, huh? <laughs> Close. Close, okay, right. You ever pull all nighter, Lauren? I have attempted. I, I could never do it today. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me either. <laughs> uh, congratulations. What's your name? My name's Whitney. Whitney, we've got you uh, some Papa Murphy's to help you with those all-nighters, okay? Awesome. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for playing. We'll do it again tomorrow right here mm-hmm. on The Breakfast Club. Same time, same place. More Papa Murphy's. Right. Uh, today, sunny 75. We'll look more at your weather forecast here for the rest of the week. Coming up next on The Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. It's Chris Young, Young Love, and Saturday night on B105 at 739. The Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. Good morning. And uh, today, it's going to be sunny and 75. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. So it's not really movie weather, but it will be eventually, right? You know? Yeah. It'll be winter. We'll be inside. You saw Twisters, by the way, this weekend. Uh-huh. How is that? What's, what's your review? Um... So, okay, so like every reboot or every sequel that's happened uh-huh. 30 years later or whatever, they all kind of follow the same plot, right? Right. And this kind of follows the same plot of the original Twisters. Like you have, oh, well, like my wife and I were talking, like, oh, well, there, there was the night tornado. You know, we had to check that off the list. Well, yeah, and, it's dark out, you know. And we had to have uh, uh, a traumatic event that would uh, start, you know, to be, you know, right. so check that off. Mm-hmm. And then... uh 
and then uh, they've got to they've got to they've got to wrangle the tornado, or they've got a new thing they're going to do, like Dorothy. You know, the first one mm-hmm. they got they got like a new way of doing things. They save the world, so check that off the box. And uh, but I thought there was a lot more people that got sucked up by a tornado than I expected. Any cows? Yeah, I think there was cows. Okay. All right. Did you have to Google anything after you watched? Like, that didn't make sense. No. no. <laughs> or was it pretty straightforward? Yeah, it was pretty straightforward. All right. But, uh, yeah. You know, it was a good movie. Okay. That well, I still got to see that. But yeah. um, anyways, we put this up on Facebook because sometimes, like, you know, we all watch movies. Probably not movies like Twisters. But where we're like, what just happened? We have to Google something, right? Mm-hmm. Like, for me, it's like anytime I watch. And I guess this isn't that dumb. But, like, a movie about, like, I don't know one of like the kings of England or something and I'm like what's going on and then after you have to google it that's not that dumb but um we want to know stuff right right yeah we want to know like what's the dumbest thing you've ever googled after seeing a movie so there's a list here from screen crush it's on b105country.com as well but like somebody looked up would a sharknado be possible which I guess isn't that dumb technically if you really it think could about be it. I mean right. you know if there's a tornado over water and there's a lot of sharks I mean it could happen I doubt that they would be quite oh, as dramatic right. as in the movie correct um how did crocodile Dundee pass away you, that somebody looked that up I don't think he did did he that's what this Was Paul uh, Hogan dead in the movie he didn't die in a movie. Oh, well, it said this is a weird one. First of all, Crocodile Dundee is fictional. He, Oh, yeah, he didn't die. But that's why people are like, He's 84 he right now. He's still alive, too. Good for him. How old were the babies in Baby Geniuses? And then why is the Cats movie so scary? The Cats movie scary? I've heard that. Wow. I've heard that. Is Titanic a true story? They people really? Be, oh, yeah. my gosh. Um, and then is Air Bud based on a true story? That's a good one because it's like, I'm sure there's dogs that can do those things, but I don't think it's based in like right. reality. We've all been there though. Yeah, I, uh, I I watched a movie over the weekend and I was starting and I Googled, I, I sometimes I watch it and then I'll Google what the plot is after to make sure I got all of it. Right. And you're like, <laughs> did I miss that? No, I watched uh, on Netflix this weekend or last night. It freaked me out. Um, Great thing to watch on a Sunday night. Uh, the movie's called Life, and I've never even heard of it, but oh. it came out like seven years ago. Jake Gyllenhaal's in it, and oh. uh, Ryan Reynolds is in it, and okay. it's about astronauts that are on the space station, and they get they, they collect samples from Mars, and they discover life from Mars, but then it turns out to be this this killing machine. It's really freaky. Wow. But I Google after <laughs> some different things about the space station and international agreements and stuff. To say, That's like happen? the most Ken thing ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was going to save it for Ken's weird news tomorrow. Things like that, it's like sci-fi. okay to Google. But yeah, if you're watching like Sharknado and you're like, Can you Sharknado know, be real? or like one of those Gerard Butler movies, like oh, Hurricane Heights, things. it's like, you know, maybe we need to like, maybe watch something better for us, you know. Gerard Butler movies always, almost always equal Googling something ridiculous after, you know. Because you're like, how did this happen? Yeah. Geostorm. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I sat that one out. Anyway, anything dumb you ever Googled after watching a movie, share it with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, send us a message on the app or uh, hit us up on Facebook or give us a call, 727-2105. We won't judge you. I just Googled Paul Hogan. That was interesting. I, I guess I've never even seen Crocodile Dundee. You never and, have? No, but I really want to. I don't even... Well, I've heard about it, but it's like, where do you even watch that? Well, there's one and two. So. Yeah, but no, there's three of them. Is there a third one? Yeah. Well, I don't think the third one's worth watching. Well, yeah. Yeah. They usually aren't. Okay. 743, B105, Darius Rucker, and... Lawrence Country Lowdown on B105. Okay, so we have been talking so much about Post Malone, and he finally dropped F1 Trillion, right? We yep. gave um, our review of it and everything last hour, but... um. How loud did you scream when he released nine more tracks? I didn't even know about this. Like, all of a sudden, you know, just chilling, and he's like, F1 Trillion, the long bed version, is available now. This was just like in the afternoon. It has nine additional tracks, and it's just him, because on the original, um, there's 18 songs, 14 are collaborations, and then he added just nine more, just him. And those are honestly my favorite ones. I didn't even hear those yet. Oh, my gosh. You must not have been keeping up with the group chat this uh, weekend. There's a lot of text going through, and I was like, what's the long bed version? I didn't realize yeah. it, but nobody laid it out for me. Oh, well, we just <laughs> thought you knew. Nope. But anyways, um, 
so good. There's one called Dead at the Honky Tonk. That one is my favorite. Um, there's one called Two Hearts, Back to Texas. Very, very country. So definitely listen after work today, Ken. I'll check it out, yes. Circle back. But he was, I didn't realize this, but um, people online were like, well, yeah, he was getting criticism because he was doing so many collaborations that people, like haters, were basically like, well, he can't do it on his own. And then he's like, hello, voila. Here's nine more suck yeah. tracks. Okay. So check that out. Keith Urban, he broke the internet again. Remember when he came here, I don't know, it was maybe a month ago, and he was like, hey, doing a show right. in Minneapolis, two days notice. He did it again in Alabama over the weekend, although he just gave a few hours notice this time. Um, he loves Bucky's. He just discovered Bucky's, and he went there a month ago. He said, I decided then and there I wanted to do a show. So in Athens, Georgia, um, he said, hey, I'm going to do a show outside Bucky's tonight. Stop by, and obviously thousands and thousands of people showed up. He thought just like one or 200 people would show up. A little naive of him to think that. Um, so he's been wearing that Bucky's T-shirt. Got him in trouble. Right. A quick trip up here. Exactly. Maybe we'll so do a quick trip concert. Or something. Exactly. We're going to manifest that. Right. Um, so, anyways, that's kind of cool. You can read about that. B105Country.com. And then, last but not least, Warren Zider's Pretty Little Poison. Um, he is coming to Minnesota. He just announced a tour for 2025. So he'll be here um, next year, and you can read all about that with our concert calendar. Tickets are on sale now. Um, so grab those. I didn't realize he had such a big following. I went to like go he to his does. Instagram to like learn more about this tour, and he has like two million followers. Oh, wow. So Is that kind of how he broke it was on, online. Or? I thought it was like TikTok, but oh. he has a big Instagram following. Well, I look for him twenty twenty five Minnesota. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. Lauren's country lowdown. Not thank bad you. for a Monday. Lots of lots there of stuff back there. There was a lot that happened over the weekend. I got to listen to the F one trillion you long do. bit version. I'm gonna you check really that do, out. Like right now. Right now? Okay. I know we're busy, but like. <laughs> Morgan Wallen right now and earn it. Thomas Rhett t-shirt on B105. It's a breakfast club with Ken and Lauren. So here's a here's a question. You like to travel, right? Mm-hmm. You like, uh, you know, um, vacations, right? I do. Doesn't everybody like vacations? There's people now that are paying companies. It's a it's a growing business to uh, be left alone on a, a deserted island. Okay. There's actually websites. I'm at one right now called... Uh, <laughs> What's this one? Do Castaway? No. DoCastaway.com. I was I saw an article about this and I checked it out. So what they what they do is people and this has been going around since twenty ten and it's actually starting to boom. People are paying to be left alone to see if they can survive in a desert island. You know, I like a vacation. I don't want to be left alone on a deserted island. Like there's a guy that was like sixty seven year old dude that just uh, did this subject of the story. They dropped him off and all, and he didn't bring anything with him except for I think he brought a hammock. How was that relaxing? Well, he wanted to see if he could do it. He wanted to see if he could do it castaway style, like Tom Hanks and Castaway. I get wanting to be like Tom Hanks. There, that's not the way for me. And I get wanting to be left alone as well, but I don't think a deserted island, I wouldn't pay for that. Yeah, like I'm looking at like different islands that you can do in like uh, in, in Indonesia, Ciro Kat, Katabi. It's one of our most popular desert islands since 2010. Our team will stand by at the nearest island in case of emergency. Stunning white sandy beaches, lively coral reefs, just 180 euros per night. I watch Naked and Afraid, and I know that I could not do that. But can I have the job where I wait on the next island over well, in case of an emergency? They have some other ones too that they actually have comfort um, experiences too, where you're you're on a you're on a deserted desert island or whatever, um, and then but there's actually a villa. So there's survival mode or comfort mode. So you yeah, can comfort be comfort mode. You can be alone on the desert island, um, and. Uh, yeah, and, and paying. Oh, it's weird what people will pay for. Like, can't we just save our money? Like, why do we have to pay to go be on a deserted island? This one's not bad. I mean, you know, one hundred ninety-five dollars or one hundred ninety-five euros per night. Sorry, so okay. it's a little more expensive than that. But you can uh, you can be on your own private island. That's not that bad of a deal. I mean, what? There's they can't be that cheap. Ken's about to sign up. Well, think about it. You don't have to worry about anybody else around you. That's true. Yeah. Do you have to catch your own food. I don't think if you're in the comfort mode. But, oh, yeah, no. But on the uh, survival mode, yeah, you got to catch your own food. No. Or kill your own food or, you know, spear fish. I don't know what you do. But be good weight loss. Yeah, that's true. I, I do think <laughs> that when I watch Naked and Afraid. <laughs> my, my luck, I'd be on a desert island and I would still gain weight. I, same. <laughs> it's like, my gosh. Same. Okay. I'm anyway. going to go on a normal, well, I'm not, but I'm going to choose the normal vacation. People are paying for this. 
Yeah. It's pretty wild. Well, I don't know. Check it out. If you want to see, I'm not making this up. Do castaway.com. D O castaway.com. Check it out. That's Very odd. Cool. Yeah. 811 B105. We got Justin Moore coming up. Justin Moore, this is my dirt on B105, Northland's number one for new country. It's Ken and Lauren. And today, going to be 75 and uh, already August 19th. Wow. I know. It's kind of the time of the year where you're like, what month are we in and what day are we in? Because, I mean, we it is still summertime, but it's not like. June or July, you know, it's like we all know what's coming. We're at bucket list time for the summer. What's left on your bucket list? What are you gonna do? Get it all in. Well, you know, kids are going back to school in a couple weeks, which, by the way, super excited about. Go on. (laughs) No, I think a lot of parents are like me, where it's like, okay, it's we need activities to do. You need, you know, something. You got to get out of the house. Yeah, right. Exactly. But anyway, um, yeah. Today gonna be sunny, seventy five. Enjoy. Luke Holmes, better together on B one hundred and five. It's Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. All right, this comes out of Japan. Scared karate expert breaks haunted hosts a haunted house's ghost jaw. Um. Okay. Oops. Here's what happened. Yeah. It's a lawsuit that took over a decade ago. A group of coworkers visited the Tawai Kyoto Studio Park. It's a theme park in Kyoto. That sounds fun. Part of a company trip, and uh, one member of the group, a karate practitioner who's reached the upper certification levels. I say like a black belt or whatever, but imagine that. Entered the haunted house while holding hands with his companion. At some point of the pair's journey through the haunted house, a Toei's Kyoto Studio Park staff member dressed in a scary costume emerged. And as soon as he did, the karate expert lashed out with his right foot, kicking the park employee in the face and breaking his jaw. It's not good. A lawsuit ensued. The ghost employee seeking compensation. And uh, the karate man agreed to pay 10 million yen in damages. How much is 10 million yen? I have no idea. I have no idea. But, like, obviously it wasn't on purpose. It was probably just his reflex. But that is unfortunate. Right. Sometimes you have to sign things. Yeah. and there, it, Well, maybe you should have to when you go in there. But yeah. they say that uh, the theme park's managing company, the, the, the karate man, the, the Japanese karate expert sued the park saying that number one, there was no partition or physical barrier. Two, the park had failed train, to train its employees to avoid attacks from customers. Well, I don't know about that, but... Yeah, and then the park should have prohibited the man from entering the haunted house because he had been drinking, because he had been drinking ahead of time. Well, that is something I mean, I've never thought of, but yeah, you don't want a bunch of like drunk people walking through. <laughs> karate it can be dangerous. experts. Yeah, it can be dangerous. I mean, I've been in many haunted houses, and um, I don't, I don't I'm, like things jumping out at me. I'm no, not, you don't. No, but I, I can see of, myself doing this. Except I could never get my right leg up that high. I know that's impressive, <laughs> actually. Well, he's a karate Very expert. Impressive. Yeah, look out. Well, if you end up going to the haunted house, be careful. Yeah, you know. I'm gonna make you go to one this year. Mm-mm, not doing it. I don't know. Really, live a little. It's, I just live a lot when I go in. It. Not fun. Yeah, but been, yeah, I do feel like you would do something like this on accident. So never mind. Yeah, I, I scream when people jump out at me. Like, like. Scotty McCreary, New Time on B105. It's Northland's number one for new country. And it's uh, Ken and Lauren with your some angel, Lauren Wells. So our angel today, it is a dog. Okay. And I know I, I got to branch out. But it's a dog from Minneapolis. So I felt like oh, it kind of right, came together. Kind of. A Bernice, a Bernice Mountain Dog named Buddy. Surprised his family by vanishing from the home and then ringing the doorbell camera upon his return. So there's a lot of facets to this. So basically, their dog buddy kept getting out of their backyard. They have a four-foot fence. And they're like, how is buddy disappearing? Right? He always would come back, whatever. They didn't know how he was getting out. So they're like, they're like we're going to get, you know, a ring camera, whatever. So one day he disappeared. And then all of a sudden, they had a ring notification. And it was buddy. And he actually pressed the doorbell like he somehow learned how to ring the doorbell and he just sat waiting patiently for them to open the front door how did he get out um so he was able to jump over the fence they realized Uh even though it's four feet but um they think that he learned how to use the doorbell by observing them doing it so he would just get out and then now he goes he rings the doorbell with his nose and then he just patiently waits for them to so they're like okay it's cute but then also like the cutest part is that he knows how to use a ring doorbell camera yeah but he's still gonna be getting out though but he always comes back, and then they let him in. Okay, well, that's that's pretty wild. You know, it reminds me of a story I heard one time. It's a true story where some woman thought that a, a black bear was trying to get break into their house uh-huh. because uh, the doorbell kept going off, and it was the black bear who was sitting there. That's amazing. The doorbell. The reason was is that uh, the vent 
or the microwave was over the door. Mm -hmm. So it was getting its paws up, trying to, smelling out of the microwave. But it looked like the woman thought that the the, the bear was aggressively ringing the doorbell trying That's to amazing. get in. <laughs> I love all the videos of bears. Like the bear playing piano when it broke into the house. Oh, Not yeah, purpose, that's right. But yeah, it yeah, kept, yeah, like, yeah. pounding down on the keys. It's just amazing. Right. Well, there, that's interesting for you. Okay, thank you, Look Lauren. Look it up. It's so cute. Cute dog in Minneapolis, too. Oh. I need a Bernese Mountain Dog. You need, yeah. If I heard, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to tell you. B105, Northland's number one for New Country. Okay, we'll see you later. Have a great day. You have a fantastic day. We'll see you again tomorrow. we got Joe Danger coming next. next. Listen while you work, and then uh, get your tinfoil caps ready for tomorrow. I'm so excited. We're talking about underwater submerged objects. Yeah, you